basically order them, get them delivered, see, aha, uh -huh, wonderful, it's a bike, it's cool, uh, I like it, and, and then pay, or they return the goods because like because the fridge was broken maybe, but usually that doesn't happen. So that's the gist of the business model, so I'm saying. Uh, it, it started with a really low budget, but as I mentioned, it had to be uh, an online transaction processing system. So it has to be had to be live all the time. They had to accept purchases all the time. It was kind of a, a challenge with the low budget, and, and that's how again I link help because it doesn't consume a lot of memory. It doesn't need heaps of uh, RAM to 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 run all the stuff. So they could afford cheap servers. Uh, yeah, that's another cool thing uh, that with this language that I've named a hundred times today already, Ellen, uh, you develop <coughs> stuff really, really quickly. It, it's quickly. Uh, okay, there are other languages that allow you to do the same thing. That's really true. But this is also readable. I mean, other languages. You don't want to read that if you want. Uh, but this is neat and clean, and you can do stuff really quickly. So, and the company, the, the business side, they, they were profitable in, in about a year, and well, it's been growing really, really madly uh, ever since. Uh, so here's the, here's the whole structure. Here's this, uh, it's called Clown Online, the OTP system. And as you see, is the consumer, uh, Buy stuff from the web shop. Draw the transaction, the purchase goes to Clown Online. We, we do some magic. We identify the person. We uh, request data from the uh, credit agencies. We request data from other agencies. And we analyze: Should we trust that? Is that guy going to pay? Um, and and uh, we'll return the purchase immediately. It all takes like, I think, according to our SLAs. If we do it in more than 10 seconds, we have to accept it anyway. So we have 10 seconds or less to actually do all this, analyze, okay, do we trust them or not, and return the answer. Um, so we have really uh, significant time pressures there. Uh, so and then we, we return that information to the web shop. The web shop confirms the purchase to the happy customer, happy customer receives the product with an invoice and pays it to the bank. And uh, well, you see these patterns, these are, this happens every day. So you see during the night dip, uh, there are no, not many transactions because people probably see. And then during the day it increases and then I guess by five o'clock or in the evening, uh, they decide I should buy some stuff. And we get a lot of transactions, and a bit less. Uh, this is on weekends, and during the pre-Christmas time, <laughs> it's it's great. It's, like, it's out there, and that is a problem as well. Like we have to solve. Okay, we will have three times more transactions during this Christmas period. What do we do? How we how do we solve it this time? Because each time we need a different solution. So. And okay, here comes the interest model. How do we do it? I actually realized in the morning that the good thing with Prezi is that you, you don't know how many slides there are. So like you can continue talking to people who just <laughs> <laughs> can hide anything. Um, all right, we do it with Erlang in Erlang. And yeah, we have short iterations. We develop quickly. Uh, sometimes it's too quickly, <laughs> like there's a guy running in. This has to be done by by tonight, otherwise it's we're doomed. <laughs> and we sit there and hack. Uh, ideally, that shouldn't happen. I guess that's uh, against the process and so on. But that happens. That's real life. You have to be ready for for stuff happening. Well, the same day. Uh, here you have the freedom to to know the schedule, you know that in six weeks or ten weeks or whatever period you will submit your, your work and so on, so you have time. There, you just never know. When, when, uh, some Friday afternoon when you think, ah, 
after work and so on. No, there's a guy coming in. We have to fix it. Uh, so it's important here that yeah, we do only important essential features. We don't do if it's not needed, we don't do fancy fancy things that would be nice. And I think it, it looks better in green, so I'll make it green because it's really nice. No, uh, as is, is Bill still here around? Solomon? Yeah. Not really. Not really. Oh, okay. Some of you might have met Bill, but he is not part of the program. Ah, uh, too bad. He's, okay. I think he's moving to England. Oh, nice. Okay, so there was a really awesome guy called uh, William Solomon, uh, and uh, he 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 was a teacher for us. I don't remember which course, but he said a thing that is as true as it can get. Like the customer won't pay for the feature features they didn't ask for. In our case, the customer is internal, so don't expect a thank you, a thank you, if you did, did that feature in green or whatever, if you did some extra. No, it has to be quick and good. It has to be according to the spec. Yes, you have to think when you implement this, because uh, mistakes can squeeze in and, and so on. You might not notice, but something might be wrong in the spec, so you have to think about it. But don't uh, in the, as it is in the industry, in such a company, you don't think that, okay, let's do this extra thing. Because there are other more important things. And that's essential to the process that we have there. Uh, yeah, so as I said, like, you have to discuss it uh, with, with the customer. In our case, it's the internal customer. To make sure that, do, do they really mean that? Uh, yeah, performance is usually not an issue. Because it, it scales, we, we know that it's fast. We don't. We have removed uh, all the bottlenecks that were really pressing. But yeah, we have to optimize stuff. If there's a bottleneck that like comes up because something was re-implemented, we'll have to look into that and, and solve it. So uh, now, in the age of cheap hardware, in most most cases, unless you're working with embedded software, I guess, you don't have these uh, performance issues. Uh, but you can't always scale hardware-wise. You have to think what kind of what kinds of algorithms you use and uh, yeah, and how you implement stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, writing readable code. That's really important because uh, it takes so long to to write readable code because. Uh, when we get new, when I was new, yeah, well, it's better to talk about myself. When I was new, I, I rewrote stuff a lot of times just because when, when you code something and you have to merge it into the main branch, <laughs> and uh, well, somebody has to review it, and, and I, I got so much feedback, it was painful. But eventually, it <coughs> teaches you to, to learn readable stuff because people will be reading that code after you. and well, it better be good, otherwise you'll get comments like, ah, oh, who wrote that? Well, it wasn't an idiot. Yeah, and we refactor often, because uh, as the company started with, uh, I don't know, one or two developers, then it grew. By the time when I was there as an, as an intern, I was, uh, well, it took something like, well, this, this space maybe, and I got to sit well, like the CTO was sitting behind my back, and since the chief architect was on vacation, I got to use his table. It was really cool. <laughs> oh, I'm sitting in the chief architect's table. And now it's different. Now it's like uh, I don't know, 60 developers, and all that is is so much overhead, and and they all all work on the same piece of code. It, it's large. It's really large. The code base is large, but you often bump into some some other developers uh, code changed yesterday and it better be good because that guy might be on vacation today and we can't just ask him or yeah so it has to be understandable and it's not about writing tons of comments in there like novels oh, I did this because and that and this it has to be well the code has to be self-explanatory that's really important yeah logging when I was studying, actually, I didn't even think of this, like logging or whatever. But logging is important. We have to collect 